Now let's talk about the science of cleanliness. Though most bacteria are good for humans and good for soil, some are not. When something can cause a disease, it is called a pathogen. Microorganisms or microbes that are pathogenic are commonly known as germs and can be in the form of bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoa. When we come in contact with dirt, we may also come in contact with germs, bacteria, and viruses that cause disease. And dirt isn't the only way we can pick up germs. Droplets from the sick person's sneeze or cough can be breathed in, and an uncovered wound can also become infected by dirt contact with a contaminated surface. We can also pick up germs from handling raw food, especially meat or dairy products. Germs like to breed in moist, warm, dark places with plenty of organic material to feed on. Some bacteria can reproduce every 20 minutes. Now think about it. Bacteria like that can grow from one cell to eight in an hour, 512 in three hours, and 4.4 trillion in 14 hours. How do viruses and bacteria work? Bacteria can be picked up from a surface up to two hours after it was contaminated and reproduced by cell division. A virus, on the other hand, will invade a cell in your body and change it so it begins to produce other viruses, each of which can invade other adjacent cells. A virus can be picked up from other sur surfaces up to 20 minutes after it has been contaminated. To preserve our health, most of us try to reduce or eliminate pathogens from our skin with good hand hygiene and from the surfaces we touch most often. But normal skin is colonized with many bacteria. We measure the amount of bacteria on a surface with with the number of colony forming units per square centimeter. Your scalp has a million, your armpits have half a million, abdomen 40,000 and forearm 10,000. Parts of your feet can have 10 million. The hands of a healthcare worker might have as many as 4.6 million CFU per centimeter squared. Washing is a good way to remove the bacteria on the surface of the skin, but some bacteria are actually under the skin and therefore it's not possible to remove them with washing. In the cleaning science research and industrial uh, and industrial sectors, the relative amount of microbes that are eliminated from a surface by disinfecting or cleaning is measured by a mathematical term called a log reduction. For example, a two log reduction means lowering the amount of microorganisms by a hundred times. If you had 10,000 germs on your hands before you washed and washing resulted in a two log reduction, your hands would only have 100 germs left on them. There are a variety of ways that germs are spread. A person's hands are the main cause of 60% of gastrointestinal illnesses and 50% of respiratory tract infections. Most people attribute GI illnesses to food poisoning, but in reality, they probably got their bug from another person or are ready to eat food in their own home, and proper washing could have avoided getting sick. Another common perception is that respiratory tract pathogens are airborne, but common respiratory tract infections such as rhinovirus are transmitted by hands. So how important is washing hands with soap? Studies show that within 30 seconds to one minute, it can result in a log reduction of bacteria and some viruses up to two to three log. That's a hundred to a thousand times fewer germs. And that can reduce the risk of infection by 50% to 60%. What exactly is soap? In ancient times, animal fat or tallow would be combined with ashes to create soap and other useful byproducts. Around 550 BC, the Babylonians used vegetable oil instead of tallow. The ancient Chinese made a detergent that is similar to soap, but performs better with hard water. 12th century Islamic documents describe the manufacturing of soap using vegetable oil combined with an alkali. By the 13th century, Muslim soap production became industrialized with manufacturing bases in Nablus, Fez, Damascus and Aleppo. The Arabs were the first to use sodium hydroxide, which is the basis of modern soap manufacturing until today. How does soap work? Most people know that oil and water don't mix. If you pour them together, the oil will float to the top of the water. That's because oil and fat are insoluble in water. Most of the germs on your hands are actually in the dirt, oil and fat on them, and not on the skin directly. Soap molecules have one end that loves water or is hydrophilic and another end that loves fat or is lipophilic. The soap forms tiny spheres called micelles. The water-loving end on the outside and the fat-loving end on the inside, the fat-loving ends encapsulate the tiny drops of oil so water can wash it away. The Center of Disease Control and Prevention describes prescribes the following ritual for hand washing. Wet them with clean water, lather for 20 seconds with soap, scrub the backs of the hands between the fingers and under the nails, rinse with clean water and dry them with a clean towel. 
Hot water does not have a measurable effect on reducing germs, nor does antibacterial soap. But alcohol-based hand sanitizers are effective if washing with water and soap is not available. But the concentration of alcohol should be 60% or above. And this works only if your hands are not visibly dirty or greasy. I said earlier that I would come back to the effectiveness of wudu, ritual used by observant Muslims to prepare for daily prayer. The wudu entails washing each body part three times. Friction and duration of washing is important in getting hands clean. For example, most people wash their hands for only 10 seconds or less, whereas studies recommend washing for at least 30. Washing each part three times increases the duration of the washing and is therefore effective in reducing bacterial counts on skin surfaces. Wudu also entails nasal rinsing, which is highly effective in present, preventing common cold and disease from other viruses. Studies show that nasal, a nasal rinse can reduce the risk of getting the common cold by over 60%. Also, nasal rinsing reduces incidence of nose picking, which can lead to self-infection and infecting others. The order of wash is highly effective in isolating and preventing the spread of germs due to the different germ counts on the surface of human body parts. Washing should be done from cleanest uh, to dirtiest body part, which is essentially the order of wudu. In general, one should first wash the hands thoroughly as they will be used to wash everything else, then move to the face, arms, head, and lastly feet. Using the left hand for dirty activities and the right hand for clean activities, studies show significant increase in bacterial load on the hands of medical students after they went to the toilet, and load on the dominant hand was significantly higher than the non-dominant one. By differentiating activities based on their potential to increase con contamination and using a clean hand for eating and social contact and the other hand for high-risk activities, the risk of spreading germs is lowered. When this practice becomes a social convention that everyone uses, the risk is lowered even further. Several studies show that frequency of washing throughout the day is important in getting clean and staying that way. Wudu is highly effective in this regard. As it, state, as it is a state of purity needed for prayers that are timed throughout the day. Being clean is not just a cultural practice, nor is it a, solely a personal responsibility. It has social and public health consequences. So, be clean and help others be clean. Have a nice day.